Shall we start with Chelsea? Uh, and this well. uh, Enzo desperate. Fernandez saga looks like he won't now uh, be coming to Stamford Bridge this month. I've been telling you all week that uh, Chelsea are trying to stagger any transfer fee. They're, they're well aware of, of potential FFP uh, restrictions and FFP breaches. Looks like Benfica are holding firm. They've said to Chelsea after uh, several days of negotiations, if you want this player, his release fee is £105 million. If not, we'll take our chances in the summer when I think there could be more uh, Premier League clubs at the bidding table, particularly if Fernandez continues uh, for Benfica in the form that he showed for Argentina at the World Cup. The one issue... Uh, that Benfica have gotten it's quite a bold move is the player has obviously made it clear he wants out mm. this month he felt like he played his last game for Benfica he obviously agitated the president and the manager by going off to Argentina to see in the new year when they'd asked him not to so they need to somehow get him back on board to maintain the interest in the summer but for Chelsea it's back to the drawing board I do have a potential alternative target because it's pretty clear they're looking <coughs> to strengthen in that midfield area uh, Romeo Lavia was a player at Southampton they came in for late in the last transfer window despite the fact Southampton only signed him last summer I was told yesterday that interest could well be reignited Southampton uh, on their part would be loathed I think to sell Lavia but certainly keep your eye on Chelsea potentially testing their result with a big money bid that surprised you with regards to Chelsea it's the player that obviously impressed them at the World Cup it's someone that they openly said they wanted uh, for the last couple of weeks uh, they know the price that is the price are you surprised they're not going for it it's, it's a big price so I think you know it's, it's ridiculous it, <coughs> price, so it? It, when you're when you're paying that sort of money you, you're you're expecting someone to make an immediate impact and also get better every single year and I think do, does he do that I, I don't know it's, it's it's a big one so I'm not surprised Chelsea are dragging their heels, to be honest. And uh, I think it could be better to wait until the, the, the summer for, for both parties in that situation. Especially with Chelsea as well. You look at what they've done the last sort of few windows, Crookie, and you could arguably say they've made mistake after mistake after mistake mm. when spending big. Um, players that are still at the club that I don't think have sort of lifted up any trees. You look at the likes of Ziyech and Kai Havertz. I don't feel have done enough. Lukaku came and went. That, that's not worked out as well. Cucurella may be overpriced and maybe they thought you know what we're not making the same mistake again you, you could probably put out a, a Chelsea 11 of players signed for big money who haven't worked out and again that goes back to what I was saying earlier their recruitment has been poor I don't think it was great in the summer it's a bit of a scattergun approach as far as Todd Bowley was concerned they've got good people in there now people like Paul Wynn Stanley who did such a good job on the recruitment side at Brighton so I do expect that to improve uh, and it doesn't surprise me in some ways mm. they've walked away for, from this Fernandez deal because you have to remember only six months ago, he was a £15 million pound player. Yeah. Now, all of a sudden, because he's a World Cup winner and because he's made an impact in Qatar, he's a £105 yeah. million pound yeah. player. I mean, that is some markup, isn't it? No, it's it going to be interesting. Is. It's going to be, and also from, from Chelsea's perspective, you know, the post Abramovich era, you know, what, what does that look like in terms of money spent, in terms of how aggressive they are in transfer markets? So, yeah, I think it's, uh, it's going to be an interesting one for sure. What else you got, Crookie? Uh, Jack Butler, we spoke about him yesterday, told uh, on good authority he's currently at the Manchester United training ground to complete his move from Crystal Palace. Probably not the headline signing that Manchester United fans wanted it's a bit this of window. Make that, isn't it? May not make, <laughs> make signing <laughs> Jack Butler. Yeah, but he's coming in as, as backup to, to David De Gea. Fascinating situation with the goalkeepers there come the end of the season because De Gea is yet to, to commit to a new long term deal. I think he's made positive noises that he wants to stay and have to take a pay cut to do so. I think when he came in in the summer, Eric Ten Hag wasn't necessarily convinced that David De Gea, because of the maybe lack of ability to play out from the back, was the long-term solution. But I think he's quietly been quite impressed with De Gea as a leader, as a character. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that one. In terms of Southampton, we've been speaking a lot about them this morning. I'm told they are close uh, to making at least one signing. They want to get two or three in uh, within the next week or so. We know they're interested in Mislav Orsic, uh, Dinamo Zagreb, Terry Moffi is a young striker from Lorient in the French League and also Carlos uh, Alcaraz, a young South American. So one of those three uh, could well be an imminent arrival at Southampton. And keep an eye on Aaron Wan-Bissaka, Jack Butland going from Crystal Palace to Manchester United. Palace will have asked United the question in the course of those negotiations about wan -Bissaka. Wolves are keen as well. We were going to speak about this yesterday. I think his form in the last two or three games might just convince Ten Hag to keep him until the end of the season. I think he's done really well. He certainly has. Um, quick word on Danny Ing. Scored yesterday. Scored the equaliser for Aston Villa. Uh, we're in a little WhatsApp group and you said potentially Everton are looking at him. Uh, anything on that? Yeah, we, we floated that idea yesterday. Uh, Aston Villa, I, I think, are open to, to offers. Probably more a permanent transfer than a loan deal. Everton have tried to sign him on loan. Uh, that's been knocked back Southampton monitoring the situation Bournemouth Wolves as well 
But again, you wonder if it's a sliding doors moment. Danny Ings mm. scoring a goal last night to rescue Unai Emery a point. Maybe there might be a rethink there. Villa want to get new bodies uh, through the building. I was told they've been offered Gerard Delafeu, former Watford winger, as a mm. possible attacking signing this summer, uh, this Great. January. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.